Good morning, everyone. Oh, come on. Good morning. Good morning. This is the third day of this amazing faith conference that is going on. How many of you have been blessed so far? Can I see your hands? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want to share that this is just, there's so much more in store for us. Amen. So be ready, be excited, and I tell you that even the sessions that is going to go on and even the evenings and tomorrow, we are going to have a powerful, powerful service. How many of you believe that? Shall we rise to our feet? And it's a morning, we are in the Father's house. Turn to your neighbor, give them a high five. Let's welcome one another to church. Amen. Hallelujah. Before we worship, I want to start with a prayer. Shall we just lift up our hands? Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for this amazing day, Lord. Hallelujah. We are ready. Somebody say, we are ready. We are excited. Our hearts are open for what you have in store for us, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, your kingdom come. Your will be done. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We are ready to receive. We are ready, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say amen. Psalms 100, Psalms 150 verse 6 says, Let everything that has bread praise the Lord. Are people breathing here today? Is there life in this room? Shall we praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift up your hands and give a praise. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise your name above every other name. The name of Jesus be lifted in this place. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We praise your name. We praise you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Put your hands together.
water, water you turn into wine. Water you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Do you believe it? Should we just lift up our hands to the King of Kings? Come on, I got I got Come on, louder. That's our God who is alive. He's alive and he's coming back. That's what you got this morning. Come on, lift him up. I got I got his great.
your praises this morning. Oh, to our God, He is great, He is strong, He is still, He is still turning, He is still walking on the water, He is still parting the sea. My God is alive, my God, come on, lift up, lift Him up, lift Him up, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Should we just shout it out? Come on, Jesus. something okay maybe you're you're just in a situation we're just gonna do a fat dance you know we're just gonna jump we're just gonna rejoice here you go musicians are you ready we're just gonna rejoice hallelujah are you ready one two three let's go Jesus this morning. He's worthy. There is one fun word. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready for some Hindi song? Let's go. Yes, 
We believe, we believe. Come on, as a whole, as a body of Christ, we want to declare this God together. Come on. We believe, we believe. Are you believing for your church? Come on, declare, come on. We believe, we believe. We believe, we believe in you. We believe. is my firm. Christ is my So 
directed to a person, a person who is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, who is almighty, a person who is faithful. Hallelujah. The Bible says that when Sarah looked away from her empty womb and she judged God as faithful, she received she received when you see who God is you receive hallelujah when you see that God is gracious you receive when you see that God is a healer you receive 
when you see that God is a blesser, you receive. When you see, hallelujah, do you see your God? Do you see your God? Hallelujah. Because when you see, you receive. Why are many Christians discouraged, depressed, broken? It's because they don't see their God. They see their own problems. They see their lack. They see their difficulties. And that's why it's in the place of worship and the presence of God. That is so important that we see. We see. We see a God who is alive, faithful, powerful, El Shaddai, almighty, everlasting. Hallelujah. Faithful to perform every word. Father, we thank you that today we are here to see, to see in your word, to see in the spirit, to see beyond what we see with our eyes. And even as we see, O oh Lord, I pray that you will elevate our faith in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. Glory to God. Amen. How many of you are blessed today? How many of you are blessed anyway? Not today, not yesterday only, but every day of your life. Amen. It's because of Christ. Glory to God. And thank you for joining us again this morning. It's going to be a day of teaching. But in the teaching, the anointing will flow. Healings will take place. Miracles will happen as you take the Word of God in your heart. Amen. And in the teaching, you will hear the rhema of God. The word that God whispers in your spirit through the spoken word that is delivered today. So give your whole heart, soul, mind, attend your eyes, your ears, keep focused on the word and receive it without any distraction, without fighting the word with your own reasoning. Can you say amen? amen. And even as you give your attention to the word, you will find His Word, His Rema. You will find His life. And that life in the Word will be medicine to your flesh. It will be health to your flesh. Hallelujah. Even just by sitting here, you're getting healthier. The Lord is healing you just by listening to the Word of God. Because when you receive, listen, when you see, you receive. When Sarah saw that God is faithful, she received. So as you are hearing the word and as you are receiving, you're going to be receiving strength in your body, in your heart, and you're going to be set free from the limitations the enemy has put upon your life. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Like I shared on the first night, the first use of our faith is so that we obtain a good testimony. It's not only for getting things from God. It's not only for getting our desires done on the earth. It's not only for us progressing, being successful, being blessed. See, all of that works in a system called the will of God. The will of God. God enables us to use faith not for our will, but for His will. In His will is also our blessings included. In His will is also our success included. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. You have to understand that when you are wanting to live a life of faith, it is connected to His will, not your will. Hallelujah. The entire kingdom of God functions in the system of His will. The entire kingdom is connected it is held together by His will because it's a kingdom. And the kingdom means it's the king's will, the king's domain. Hallelujah. So when we pray, Lord, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, we are concerned about the will of God, not our will. Can you say amen? So unless you know the will of God, you cannot walk in faith. You cannot exercise faith. Faith begins where the will of God is known. 
Faith can be exercised when you know the will of God. Prayer can be exercised when you know the will of God. And that is why it's so important that you get the knowledge of God's will from His Word. A lot of people pray and fast a lot. A lot of people do a lot of spiritual exercise, but they do not spend time in the Word. They do not spend time digging up the will of God for their lives. They suppose, they suppose, they assume that just by the strength of the zeal, by the strength of the passion, they will get what they want from God. But God's system doesn't work that way. It's connected to His will. The will of God. Now the will of God can be known because it is revealed in the scriptures. Can you say Amen? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith comes. Everyone say faith comes. So if you don't have faith, faith can come to you. So you have in your hand the source of faith. You have in your hand the reservoir of faith. You have in your hand where faith is going to come from. Now the point that you must apply is hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And it's not just hearing from your ears. It is hearing with your attention, your focus, your heart, your humility, your teachableness. It is hearing not only the Word that is spoken, but as you are hearing the Word, what is the Holy Spirit whispering in your heart? Because many times people just hear the word that is proclaimed and they get passionate and zealous and emotional about it and they try to go and act on that word and they fall flat on their face. Are you with me? So before I go into what I have prepared for today, I feel led of the Lord to spend a few minutes again reiterating what I taught yesterday about how faith comes. And to again make you understand the difference between the Logos and the Rema. Alright? So there are two Greek words for word. One is the Logos and the other is Rema. Can you say Amen? So Logos is the complete counsel of God's will. Logos is the complete counsel, the complete expression of a mind. Let's say for example from a human experience, everything that Shakespeare wrote, that complete Library of all his works is his logos. All right, so the complete counsel in the mind of God that exists in eternity, that exists in heaven, that exists in the realm of the spirit is the logos of God. The logos in the beginning was the logos, and the logos was with God, and the logos was God. So, the word of God is the logos. The complete expression of what God wants to speak to humanity is in His Word. Can you say Amen? But Logos is vast. Logos is complex. Logos is deep. When you are in a need, when you are in a specific time of your life, when you are in a specific crisis and a specific struggle, and you are wanting a specific word from God in order to fight the fight of faith, sometimes you cannot just go to the Logos. Where do you go? Thousands of scriptures, thousands of subjects. Amen. So the other Greek word for word is rema. Can you say rema? Rema is a specific word. Rema means an utterance. Rema means the spoken word. Rema is a word from the word. Try to understand what I'm saying. Rema is a word of God from the complete counsel of God. So when Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, it is not hearing the Logos of God, it's hearing the Rema of God. Can you say Amen? But the Rema of God comes through His Logos. The Rema of God comes alongside His Logos. As I am teaching the Word of God to you, God will speak individually in your own hearts, your action to the Word that you hear, that is the Rema God whispers in your heart. And Rema all the time is not spectacular. It is not a divine encounter all the time. Sometimes Rema is just an impression in your heart. Just a whisper in your heart. Just a thought that God puts on your heart as you are listening to the Logos. So faith comes by hearing the Rema of God. The Rema 
of God. Can you say amen? So we have to understand this difference. Now look at that slide and it says here, the relationship between Logos and Rema, we need to understand this. Rema takes the eternal, which is the Logos, and he brings it into time, your specific situation right now. That means the Rema God gave you five years back will not be applicable today. Because that was a specific word in that moment of time. Many years back, a friend of mine was planning to go to America and he was applying for the visa and the finances. And it was very difficult. So he was asking the Lord, Lord, how can I exercise my faith? So God gave him a song. That song is, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. It's written by Don Moen. How many of you have heard that song? So that was a rhema from God. And God told him, sing that song every day. So he sang that song every day, and as he was singing that song, his faith grew, his confidence grew, and everything that he was praying for came to pass in his life. Now, five years later, he has other needs. So instead of seeking God, if he just says, even last year, five years back, I sang God will make a way. So now I will also sing God will make a way. And if he did it that way, it will not work for him. Because Rema is a specific word that is for a specific time. Can you say Amen? Rema takes the heavenly and brings it down to earth. Okay? Rema takes the potential that's in the Logos and brings it into a real experience for your life. So Rema, you need to understand the difference before we get presumptuous in our faith. Peter walked on water. Now you can read that in the Bible, it's in the Logos, and then you may even decide for yourself. If Peter did, I can also do. And you may end up drowning. There's a story of people drowning because they just tried to do what Peter did. But listen, Peter had the faith to walk on water because before Peter stepped out of the boat, Jesus said, come. Jesus uttered the word. Who is Jesus? He's the Logos. Now, did Jesus give Peter the full discourse of the Bible at that time? Did Jesus explain Genesis to Revelation? No. Jesus gave one word, one word, come. And Peter stepped out of that boat and Peter was actually walking on that word. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The time when Jesus told Peter to cast your net on the right side of the boat, that was a rema. The whole night, Peter had toiled for fish, but they found nothing. An experienced fisherman toiling the whole night. Now, it was not that there was no fish on that sea. It was full of fish. But they tried with all their might and nothing happened. But when God gave them a word through Jesus, Jesus says, cast your nets on the right side. That word, as they believed on it, and as they cast the net on the right side, net breaking, boat sinking, load of fish. That's a rhema. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. So you have to understand the difference. All right? Look at Isaiah 55 verse 8 to 13. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So, there are two realms that are mentioned here. Please keep this in mind. The realm of God up here, and the realm of men down here. This is where you are. Your thoughts, God's thoughts. God's realm, men's realm. Amen. Try to understand the difference. Amen. So, there is no way that men can understand the complete counsel of God. There is no way. God did not make us omnipotent. Even though we are created in the image of God, we are not omniscient and we are not omnipresent. So there is no way that man's thoughts can understand the complete logos of God. So there's a big gap between God's thoughts and our thoughts. Hallelujah. So this is the logos, but here on the earth, we need God's intervention so that we can walk by faith. 
So God's telling us here, as the rain comes down to the earth, as the snow comes down from heaven to the earth, and it brings life to the earth, even so, the word, that word that proceeds from my mouth. Verse 11, the word that goes forth from my mouth, the word that goes forth from my mouth, my mouth means his breath is on it, which means it's a rema. The word that goes forth from my mouth, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The word proceeds means it's a proceeding word. That means God will speak to you something this year, and God will speak to you something last year, and God will speak to you something next year, and next month. There's a proceeding word from God into your life, and the Bible says, Jesus says, you will live by that word. Your life will come from the proceeding word of God. Matthew chapter 4 verse 4. Do you know the word word there is rema? It's not logos. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every rema. Everyone say rema. That proceeds from the mouth of God. So, the work of faith is this. You have to dig the word Go into the Word, pay attention to the Word, study the Word, spend time with God till He breathes the real mind in your heart. That is where faith comes from. Now the Bible says, go you into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations, right? Yes or no? Yes. Can you just decide, I'm going to go to China today? But the Bible says, now I'm not saying don't preach the Word. I'm not saying just wait for a rema every day. No, you have to begin where you are. That means in your family circles, in your city, that's applicable because that's where you are. Amen. But you just cannot go into any part of Africa, any part of Asia, just because of the locals. You have to seek God. Because if you just jump out on that word, you're going to be presumptuous in your faith. So that's where you have to pray and seek God. You see, Rema implies that you have a living relationship with God. A dependent relationship with God. A submitted relationship to God. A yielded relationship to God. Rema implies that God is in front of you and you are behind. You live by the proceeding word of God, what God speaks to you, what God speaks to you, which means you cannot divorce your relationship with God and faith. You cannot just read the book of a man of God and then decide, I'm going to do the same. That book can inspire you, but above all, your relationship with God must be alive and it is where God speaks to you. How did we as a church have faith to go to Myanmar? and plant churches there, and do Bible schools there. Well, it's because God spoke to us. We just didn't decide. Get a bright idea. God spoke. And when we obeyed the first word, God spoke again, and God spoke again. And there was a time when God said, I'm giving you the nation of Myanmar. When we heard that word, which is in line with the logos, the rema and the logos will always glow together, flow together. It will not contradict. Amen. Hallelujah. That means you will never get a rema that says, divorce your wife. No matter how anointed the prophetic service was, you will never get a rema that says, divorce your wife. In some circles, they actually use prophecy to divorce. Even today here in Nagaland. It must always flow in line with the Word of God, with the Logos of God. Can you say Amen? amen. Hallelujah. So, you must understand the difference and you must be patient, yielded on the Lord and walk closely with God in your heart. Mary is the example. When the angel came and told Mary that you will have a son, Mary said, how will this thing be? And the angel told her, for with God, nothing is impossible. The word nothing is two words in the Greek. It means u, which means no, and thing is the word rema. 
No rema from God is impossible. According to Isaiah 55, my word that proceeds from my mouth is not void. It's not empty. It is not lacking any power. Whatever God speaks, the word itself is loaded with power and potential. The moment you believe that word, that word will manifest in your life. But sometimes the rema will make you a little afraid and a little insecure. Because the rema may say, give 50,000. Now you are a little insecure. You heard the word, but your mind is telling you another thing. Now when God speaks to you in that specific manner, it is never to minus from your life. It is never to take away from you. It is to give an opportunity for you to receive more. But that receiving more is loaded. It's, it's packed in the word. The potential of you receiving is in that word. It's in the word. The word that God spoke to you. Now you have to receive that word like Mary did. Be it unto me according to your word. She received the word. She obeyed and bang. That word manifested in her stomach. And then after nine months, poof, Jesus came out. Right? Which means this. Keep on believing till something comes out of your life. Amen. Let that word grow, develop here. Remember when God came to Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, God said, get out of your father's house. Get out of your surroundings. Get out of your society and go to a land that I will show you and I will bless you. And I will increase, I will multiply you. It was a specific word that came to Abraham. Abraham did not read in a magazine somewhere and decide that he's just going to follow God. It came in a personal relationship. The faith of Abraham implies that you have a relationship with God. Faith is not a technique. Faith is not a formula. Faith is not a subject that you can just master by studying books about it, writing a PhD about it. Faith is very personal. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, that's the difference between Rema and Logos. Faith comes by hearing the Rema of God. The Rema of God. And obeying that Rema of God. Can you say Amen? amen. Hallelujah. Now I'm not saying the Rema will always come spectacular. But the Rema will come to you. As you are hearing the Logos. As you have committed to a lifestyle, a system of Christianity, which is from the heart by faith. As you commit to a system, a system of studying the Word, praying, staying in fellowship, going to church. In this ecosystem, in this environment that you commit to plant yourself in, and as you stay committed to that, using your faith to keep your testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. Even if nothing seems to be happening, you are faithful. That's what faith is. Faith is not only seeing manifestations of blessings in your life. Faith is to obtain a testimony, a good report. Hallelujah. Amen. When you stay in that place, surely something will take place. Now turn with me in your Bible to 2 Corinthians. So the key is hearing, giving undivided attention to the Word of God, paying attention to it, giving your heart, soul, and mind to it, keeping it in the midst of your heart, in the midst of your heart. There was a man of God who wrote a testimony about how he was having an incurable skin disease. He was a soldier in the army in the Middle East. The heat was unbearable. And the Lord told him, go into my word and spend time in my word. So for the next three months, he just spent time in his word. And the Lord spoke to him because he was a medical practitioner. Just as you take medicine three times a day, morning, lunchtime, and the evening, go into my word and take medicine, the word of God, three times a day. 
So that's what he would do. He would eat his food and then go and open the Bible. And for the next one hour, just read the scriptures. And then in the lunchtime, he would have his lunch, go into the Bible and read the scriptures. Just go, paying attention to the word, giving his heart, soul, and mind focus to the word. And without knowing when, he realized that the incurable disease in his body completely disappeared. Because the word became medicine to his flesh. That was a rema that the Lord gave him for that specific time. Now, five years later, he got sick of a certain sickness. And you know what God told him? God put it in his heart to go to a doctor. And the doctor intervened in his life and brought healing into his life. But then another case, again in the future, when he got sick again, he stood in faith, received prayer for some other people, and God healed. See, healing is the logos. The will of God is healing. How many of you agree? But the way healing comes is different. It doesn't come the same way all the time. Are you following me? There's a different way it comes. That's the rema. You have to get that from the Lord. There was a man of God. God, God told him as he was praying for his pain in the need to go away, God spoke to him, stop taking coffee. But he thought that was his own word, that was his own voice, and he prayed and fasted for three days and nothing happened. Nothing happened. So he asked the Lord again, Lord, what's happening? I'm just praying and fasting. I'm impressing you. I'm trying with all my heart. And God told him the same thing again, stop taking coffee. So stop taking coffee and guess what happened? The pain left. That was a specific word. I hope you're getting what I'm saying. Amen. All right. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. I'm going to talk about the spirit of faith. And I'm going to continue this even on Sunday morning. All right. So, spirit of faith. First day I talked about what faith is. Faith is a firm conviction. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. But when faith comes... This is what you must do. Faith must be released. Because faith without works is dead. Faith must be released for faith to manifest the blessings upon your life. Can you say amen? So faith must be released. We must learn how to release our faith. The problem in the church today is not that they do not believe the Bible. It's that they do not believe God. It's not that they do not believe what the Bible and the Scriptures say. The problem in the church today is that people have not been taught how to release their faith. Some of you have scriptures all over your bedroom, Bibles all over your houses, loaded with potential to change your life, to recreate a new life for you and your family. But it lies in your bedroom, dormant, powerless to change anything in your life because you have not learned to release your faith. Faith must be released. Turn to your neighbor and say, faith must be released. Faith without works is dead. Just as the body without the spirit is dead, faith without works is dead. So if you have the teaching of faith, you must add works to it. The works to it is the spirit of faith. Right? Look at a business like Apple with all its offices and factories all over the world. That is the shell. That's the body. But the, the buildings and the company would not exist if it did not come first from a philosophy. It did not come first from a vision in the hearts of a few men. It did not come first from a belief that they could provide a better technology to improve the life of mankind. That is the spirit. The company without the spirit, the company will die. Your business without the Spirit. What is the Spirit? The Spirit is the faith in the heart of the founder. The Spirit is the vision. The Spirit is the philosophy in which they do business. Look at Tata all over India. You can see the company, the, 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 the brand all over the world. You can see all over the country, right? But do you know that there's a Spirit behind Tata? A Spirit. Now, let me tell you this. The Spirit is more important than the name of the company. 
The spirit is more important than the building because the building came out of the spirit. The vision in the heart of the founder. Are you following me or not? See, you must understand that you have to add the spirit component to your life. You have a body. You have a face. You have some gifts and talents in your heart, in your hands. You have some resources God has given to you. But I tell you, your life will not go in any direction unless you add the spirit. The spirit is here. The word, the faith, the prayer, the belief, the hope, the courage. Unless you add that to your life, your life is not going to go in any direction. Your marriage, on paper you are a husband and wife, but there is no life in your marriage. You know why? There's no spirit behind that marriage. What's the spirit? The Word of God. Walk in love. Walk in agape. Pray for one another. Forgive one another. That's the spirit behind the marriage. The body without the spirit is dead. So your faith, there must be a spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. Don't put that slide, just put verse 13 as I said. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak. Okay. I believed and therefore I spoke. If you ask Paul, what's the secret to the success of your life? What's the secret to the success of your walk with God that in all the years of serving the Lord, going through imprisonment, beating, stonement, falsely accused, hunger, shipwreck, going through all of those difficulties and yet at the end of the life you said, I have finished the fight of faith. I've remained faithful to the call. I'm ready to go home. What is the secret to Paul's life? If you asked him that, what's the secret to your three missionary journeys? What's the secret to you planting all those churches? What's the secret to you writing all those epistles? What's the secret to such a fruitful life? Paul would not say, well, it's because I was educated in the best university in the world. It's not because I had a PhD. It's not because I was the smartest or the best looking. The answer is here. We having the same spirit of faith. I having the same spirit of faith as the elders in the Old Testament. I having the same spirit of faith as them. I believed and I spoke. Can we say amen? amen. Hallelujah. That's the secret to Paul's life. Not just faith, but the spirit of faith. There are two vital components to the spirit of faith. Write it down. Number one, believe. Number two, speak. As simple as that. Two vital components to the spirit of faith. Number one, believe. And number two, speak. You must believe and speak. You must connect your heart where you believe to your mouth where you say. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What is faith? Faith is what you believe. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing the rhema of God. But once faith comes, it must be released because faith without works is dead. So understand this. The spirit of faith is not just mental faith. It's not just agreeing. The spirit of faith is not saying, I agree to the doctrines of this denomination. I agree to the tenets of this church. No, that's not the spirit of faith. You can become a member of a church and agree to all the doctrines of the church and yet not have faith. The spirit of faith is not a faith that is based on knowledge of scriptures alone. Not knowing the stories of the Bible alone. Do you know that there are many levels to scripture? There is a historical component to Scripture that when you just read it first, it's a historical book. That's the first surface. But then there's a surface below that. It's called doctrines. Many Christians haven't gone beyond the first surface. They just know the historical stories. That's it. You need to go beyond that to understand the doctrines. But then the doctrines is not enough. 
You have to go beyond that and understand the system of God that works in the kingdom of God through the understanding of the doctrines. That means God adds knowledge, God adds understanding, God adds wisdom. The spirit of faith comes more, comes not only from the place of doctrine, but from the place of deep wisdom and understanding and faith, where you have seen the light in the Word of God and how God operates. Can you say Amen? Hallelujah. It comes from a faith, from a heart that is full of fire of God's Word. The spirit of faith comes from a heart that knows God. The spirit of faith comes from a heart that has seen the way God operates. The spirit of faith comes from a fiery faith. I hope we're taking down these notes. The spirit of faith does not accept whatever circumstances come in your life. The spirit of faith does not accept the status quo. The spirit of faith doesn't say, que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. We are in Naga land, so we are tribals. God help us, God have pity on us. That's not the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith says even though we are tribal and we are in the backward place, the spirit of faith says we can change the world. We can impact the world. The way God uses you is not dependent on your race or your past, your family background, your education. You need education, get all the education that you can, but God's not limited by your education. Can you say Amen? The spirit of faith is connected to God, connected to the divine, connected to the supernatural. It is not influenced by anything that is there on the earth. Hallelujah. The spirit of faith is a faith that changes situations and circumstances. The spirit of faith is a faith that moves mountains and destroys the work of the enemy. The spirit of faith is a faith that will keep you moving. In every season of your life, you will move. You know what faith is? Faith is living from victory to victory, from glory to glory, from level to level. That's what a life of faith is. David had a spirit of faith when he was 17 years old. It is not exclusively for Bible school students, all great men and women of God. You can be 16 years old and have a spirit of faith. Caleb had a spirit of faith when he was 80 plus years old. Yesterday I said 70, but of course he had it when he was 40. But even when he was 80, he said, give me this mountain. 40 years back, I was supposed to have this, but all my friends said, no, we cannot. And so we could not enter the promised land, but now we can give me the same mountain again. The spirit of faith does not have retirement in his vocabulary because he was 80 years old and he was still saying, I want to take this mountain. That means the spirit of faith always looks ahead. The spirit of faith doesn't look to the past. The spirit of faith doesn't complacent with all your achievements. The spirit of faith is always looking for new mountains to conquer. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Paul had a spirit of faith. Hallelujah. What does the spirit of faith look like? Turn to Acts chapter 16, verse 22 to 26. What does the spirit of faith look like? Here is one of the best examples. The Bible says that in Philippi, Paul and Silas were caught. They were beaten. They were whipped. They were knocked out. They were bleeding from the nose and from the mouth. They were bound in the hands. They were bound in the feet. And they were put into the prison. And Satan thought, I have won. Satan thought, this man who's preaching the gospel with signs and wonders, if I can just tie his hands, if I can just bind his feet, if I can just put him in prison, the work of God will stop. So Paul was there in prison. <laughs> in the middle of the night. But guess what? They forgot to tie his mouth. The devil forgot to tie his mouth. Amen. And Paul and Silas in the middle of the night began to pray and praise and worship and sing hymns to the Lord. And as they began to praise God and as they began to sing hymns to the Lord, hallelujah. See, the spirit of faith will praise God in every circumstance. 
Hallelujah. As they were praising God, as they were praising God, hallelujah, God came to that very place. If you want God to find your address, open your mouth and begin to praise Him. Hallelujah. See, what this tells us is this. It does not matter how bound you are today. It doesn't matter how bound in poverty, whether you have minus zero in your bank account, it doesn't matter how much in debt you are, it doesn't matter how persecuted you are, it doesn't matter how bad your past is, it doesn't matter how much in failure, depression, oppression, sickness you are, it doesn't matter. All that it matters is if you have a mouth. If you have a mouth, you can connect to your heart and you can change your life. Hallelujah. That's what it means. You think that it's the rich uncle that will change your life? You think that it's the politician that will change your life? No. All you need is a heart and a mouth. 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 That is your most valuable possession. Your heart. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of your heart will flow your life. Your life comes out of your heart. Well, what's your heart? Your heart is a place where you believe. Hallelujah. Jesus said, my father is looking for true worshipers who will worship me in spirit and in truth. In spirit means it's from the heart. In spirit, it means it's not from the externals. It's not from what you do on the outside, the clothes you wear, how many crosses are in your house. It's from your heart. What you believe in your heart, the invisible place that you connect to the realm of God and the truth of God that directs how your heart should express its faith. And as you worship God from your heart, from that inner place, and you declare your faith in the Word of God, God sees that as true worship. Hallelujah. All you need is a heart and a mouth to change your life. Not connections, not money, your heart and your mouth. Can you say amen? amen? Believing and speaking will connect you to God. Believing and connect, believing and speaking will connect you to your inheritance in Christ. Believing and speaking will connect you to heaven. Believing and speaking will connect you to the realm of the Spirit. Do you know that? This year, the theme in our church is live in the Spirit. Live in the Spirit, the year of the Spirit. How do I live in the Spirit? It's very simple. Believe in your heart and speak. Believe the Word of God. Believe the truth of God's Word which came from the spirit realm, which came as a rema to these men of God and they wrote it down. Believe in the Word that was whispered to the men of God and they wrote in the Bible, but the Word in the Bible was first spoken from the mouth of God. Believe in that Word. Believe in that Word. Believe. Believe means in the spirit you are. You are believing it and you are speaking. And that's how you live in the spirit. That's how you bring the potential of the spirit realm into the natural realm. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Look at Numbers chapter 13. We know this story. The 12 spies that were sent into the promised land. They went and they saw that exactly as God promised, the land was that. Land flowing with milk and honey. Land full of abundance. So, 10 spies had a bad report, 2 spies had a good report. Understand this, all 12 of them saw the same thing. All 12 of them said, the land is good. All 12 of them said that. But 10 of them, they came back with a bad report. The giants are too big in the land. There are too many of them. And we are like grasshoppers in our sight. And they gave a bad report. Now, listen to this. They did not give a wrong report. They gave a right report. They gave a report of the facts. The giants are in the land. There are too many of them. That's what the report they gave. The report they gave came from their senses. The report they gave came from what they saw. It was not necessarily an evil report in the way we understand evil. They were not lying. 
They were not slandering. They were not using cuss words. They were just stating a fact that they saw. But what they saw, which was opposite to God's will in their life, God says, is an evil report. When you speak all the time only of what you see, what you feel, what you think, which is opposite to the will of God, God says, that's a bad report. When you speak all the time of what the doctor says and not the word, what the Word of God says, that's a bad report. But the two of them, Joshua and Caleb, Caleb said, come on, let's go. We are well able to take it. The 10 spies says no. No, the question is this. The 10 spies also saw what God wanted them to see. It was not that they did not see what God wanted them to see. They saw the land flowing with milk and honey. They saw what God wanted them to see. But the problem in the sight was this. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. We are like grasshoppers in their sight. Hallelujah. Amen. What they said came out of what they saw in themselves. I'm a backward tribe. We are from the Northeast. We are not like that. My family, my background, you're from a small church. What do you see of yourself will determine what comes out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Caleb had a different spirit. The Bible says in Numbers 14, God himself testified, Caleb has a different spirit. And so God said, Caleb and Joshua will inherit the land. And even though there was a delay of 40 years, that Joshua and Caleb could not possess the land that God had promised them, ultimately, because they said, we are well able to go and possess it. Amen. We are well able to go and possess it. Even though there was a delay, after 40 years, Caleb possessed and Joshua possessed. You know what this means? Mark 11 verse 23. You will have whatever you say. You will have whatever you You will not have what your enemy says. So don't worry too much about what people say. Don't worry about what your neighbor says. Don't worry about what your enemies say, right? Because you will not have what they say. Why are you so worried about what your friends are telling you? Saying about you because you're walking by faith. You will not have what they say. You will have what you say. When I started preaching grace as a faith minister, a lot of faith ministers started saying bad things about me. I was hurt for a while, but God said, why are you hurt? You will not have what they say. So let them say, I'm not going to have what you say. I will have what I say. So let me protect what I say. Amen. Hallelujah. So Caleb, he got what he said, even though there was a delay. Hallelujah. So the spirit of faith will connect you to your inheritance. The spirit of faith in Caleb's heart connected him to his mountain that he possessed. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So the spirit of faith is more than just the formula and the steps of faith. The spirit of faith is like a fire of faith. It's a contagious faith. The spirit of faith is not something that you can just teach. You cannot just read in the book and have it. The spirit of faith is caught. That means you get it. You learn it from people that you hang out with. Timothy learned from Paul. Joshua learned from Moses. Remember the time when Joshua was fighting with the Amorites in Joshua chapter 10? And when he was fighting and he found out that the people were too much and he would actually not be able to kill anyone, everyone because the sun was going down, Joshua said to the sun and the moon, stay in your place. Joshua spoke to the sun. 
Joshua spoke to the sun and said, Sun, be still. Where did he learn that? From Moses. He spoke to the water. That's why Paul writes to Timothy and said, The same faith that was in your grandmother and the same faith that's in your mother, that same faith is in you. Do you know that you can build a legacy of faith that you can pass as an inheritance to your children? Amen. Faith is the most valuable investment you can make in your life that you can pass on to the generations to come. Because it is that what will cause transformation in society. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. What is the spirit of faith? The spirit of faith is when you're thinking, you're speaking, your attitude of life is so conscious of God and His Word and your identity in Christ that every time you speak, only faith comes out. That's the spirit of faith. Can you say amen? Faith and complaining cannot exist in the same mouth. If faith and complaining is existing in your same mouth, you are not having the spirit of faith. Hallelujah. Faith and self-pity cannot exist in the same house. Spirit of faith is no matter what you're going through, ultimately faith will come out. Faith will come out. As you see here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, look at verse 8 to 18. Now the spirit of faith does not mean you will have a perfect life, a life without trials and tribulations and crises. The spirit of faith does not mean that you will not go through any problems for the rest of your life. Many Christians have this difficulty that they encounter as they walk with God, that they thought when they gave their life to Jesus, all the problems will go away, all the persecution will leave. But when you begin to be fruitful for God, you find out that you become a target for the devil and now there are more problems that are creeping up in your life. The spirit of faith does not mean that you will not have problems and difficulties in your life. Look at the Paul's example. Look at verse 8. This is the spirit of faith. This is the context in which he said verse 13. We cannot say verse 13 without looking at these verses. I believe and therefore I speak comes from these experiences. Look at verse 8. This is from the Passion Translation. Put it up on the screen, guys, media, the PowerPoint. Though we experience every kind of pressure, though we experience every kind of pressure, we are not crushed. What is that? That's the spirit of faith. Amen. Even though I'm going through all this difficulty, I will not be crushed. Hallelujah. At times, I don't know what to do, but quitting is not an option. Yes. That's a verse for some pastors right now. At times, I don't know what to do, but I'm not going to quit. That's the spirit of faith. Look at verse 9. We are persecuted by others, but God has not forsaken us. We may be knocked down, but I am not out. That's the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith does not mean that you will not face persecutions and trials and difficulty and lack. You will go through those things. But you use your faith to overcome. Amen. Amen. Look at verse 10. We continually share in the death of Jesus in our own bodies so that the resurrection life of Jesus will be revealed through our humanity. We consider living to mean that we are constantly being handed over to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus will be revealed through our humanity. The life of Jesus revealed through our humanity. The ultimate goal of faith. Keep this in your heart and your mind. The ultimate goal of faith is that your life glorifies Jesus. The ultimate destination of faith is that you become a man and a woman in whom God is glorified. They become a man and a woman in whom when the world sees you, they see the beauty of God. They see the attributes of God, the wisdom, the power, the grace of God in your life, in your finances, in your health, in your marriage, so that you become an expression of the glory of God. That is the ultimate destination of your faith. It's not just getting a miracle here and a healing here and a blessing here. It's a life that manifests the glory of God. 
like Jesus. And sometimes that happens through the trials you go through. Verse 12, so then death is at work in us, but it releases life in you. We have the same spirit of faith that is described in the scriptures when it says, first I believed, then I spoke in faith. So we also first believe, then speak in faith. We do this because we are convinced that he who raised Jesus will raise us up with him and together we'll all be brought into his presence. Yes, 15, look at verse 15. Yes, all things work for our enrichment so that more of God's marvelous grace will spread to more and more people, resulting in an even greater increase of praise to God, bringing Him even more glory. Verse 16, so no wonder we don't give up. That's the spirit of faith. We don't give up. Turn to your neighbor and say, we don't give up. Even though our outer person gradually wears out, our inner being is renewed every single day. We view our slight, short-lived troubles in the light of eternity. We see our difficulties as a substance that produces for us an eternal, weighty glory far beyond all comparison. Very important. The next verse. How can I walk in the spirit of faith? This is the key. Because we don't focus our attention on what is seen. Paul was not seeing his bound hands, his bleeding back, his bound legs. Paul was seeing the glory of God in heaven and he was praising and praising God. Hallelujah. We don't focus our attention on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but the unseen realm is eternal. How do I walk in the realm of the Spirit? How do I walk in the Spirit of faith? Look at the unseen. Look at the unseen. Don't look at the seen. Don't look at your lack. Don't look at your problems. Don't look at your enemies. You're not going to get any faith from them. You're going to have to look at the unseen realm. You're going to have to look at the privileges, the blessings, the inheritance, the power. You're going to have to look at the nature of God. Hallelujah. Our Father in heaven. You have to connect to a realm that you cannot see, but by faith you know is there. And by faith you say, Our Father in heaven. Do you know the moment you pray, you have to see the unseen. You cannot pray unless you see the unseen. You have to see the realm of God. You have to see the character of God. You have to see the promises of God. That's how you walk in the spirit of faith. I am blessed even though I don't see any blessing. With every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. I'm strong in the Lord when I feel so weak. Hallelujah. I'm rich in Christ when I have nothing in my pocket. I'm healed when I have fever in my body. That's the spirit of faith. I'm more than a conqueror. When Satan is beating me every day, I say, I'm more than a conqueror. That's the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith says, I will not give up when you want to give up. The spirit of faith says, I'm strong in the Lord when you feel like crying. <laughs> so many times you want to cry, right? That moment you say, I'm not going to give up. The spirit of faith will come out of the limitations of your flesh. The spirit of faith will come out of the pain of your flesh. There's a breaking process. There's a grinding process. Only when you do the chili like that, the sweetness of the chili comes out. Hallelujah. So the grinding process of life, hallelujah, will produce the spirit of faith out of you. So when the grinding is happening, don't get defeated. Don't give up. Don't get crushed. Don't get knocked out. Come on, stand to your feet right now. Come on, say this to me. I believe and therefore I speak. I believe I'm forgiven of all my sins. I believe I'm righteous. I believe I'm strong in the Lord. I believe I'm blessed. Hallelujah. I believe I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. I believe I'm righteous. I believe I'm justified. I believe I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. Hallelujah. What do we confess? Confess your faith in the blood of Jesus. Confess your faith in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on. Take one minute. Take one minute and declare what you believe. Come on, take one minute everyone. Speak what you believe. Speak what you believe. This is your practice time. This is practical session. Speak what you believe right now, everyone. Shabalabari baba de Hallelujah. Oh, ha, ha, ha. 
I will not die, but I will live. And I will declare the glory of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not want. I will not lack. The Lord delights in the prosperity of his servant. God delights in the prosperity of his servant. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I may be knocked down, but I will not be knocked out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I am blessed. I am strong in the Lord. I am rich in Christ. Hallelujah. God is the strength of my life. The Lord is my light. And the Lord is my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? Hallelujah. I will not fear what my enemies will do. I will not fear what the enemy will do. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the redeemer of my life. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you blessed this morning? Amen. You are dismissed. Please go and have tea and biscuits and come back here by 11.20. Alright, we're back here by 11.20. So, go and have fellowship. Enjoy your time with one another. Light to the darkness you bring warmth to the world Peace to the chaos you're the hope that is sure When you speak life's created
Push back the darkness around your master.
trust in you. We stand on your shoulders and carry the flame. He's been faithful before, he'll be faithful again. Oh, the God of our fathers was faithful to them. Over and over, they trusted in him. So we stand on their shoulders and carry the flame. He's been faithful before, he'll be faithful again. He's been faithful before, he'll be faithful again. He's been faithful before, he'll be faithful again. So whatever may come, we'll sing it out. I know that I don't fight alone. I know. No matter what it looks like, we don't fight alone. a song, a phrase that only I can remember. Who else is worthy? Who else is worthy?
I want to show us all stand to our feet. And let's declare this together. Just give a high five. Just give a smile. God is so good. Thank you. And I will love you. Forever on my day. 
you would just lift up and come on, declare. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just a verse. Come on, isn't he worthy of all our praises? Isn't he worthy of all our worship? Just take this moment just to pour out your praise. Tell him you are good. Tell him you are good. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let us die. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let. believe that Let the 
when we die and go to heaven but here on earth we will sing of the goodness of the Lord we will declare the goodness of God hallelujah no problem no crisis no tribulation can shut our mouths because we are a people of faith hallelujah come on just declare that God is good God is always good Come on, praise Him for a moment. Hallelujah. 
Come on, declare the goodness of God over your life. The goodness of God over your children. The goodness of God over your body. How your body is blessed. The goodness of God over your circumstance. Ha -ha. Yes, you are. you down yeah when you stand on his word oh he'll never let you down he's never gonna let you down come on turn to your neighbor and say he's never gonna let you down come on sing to them and say he's never gonna let you down Never gonna let you down. Come on, sing like a rock star. Sing to your neighbor and say, He, he never gonna let you down. Never gonna let you down. For he is good. For he is good. Look at your neighbor and say, He is good. He is good. 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 Oh. oh. Tell him he is, is good. He Look at five people and say he is good. Look at five people around you. going to change our mind. Hallelujah. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, nothing's going to change your mind. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you, worship team. Thank you for serving all of us. So we're going to go straight into our session. And Bishop Fatah is here to deliver the word for us. Receive with all sincerity and humility. And because they were stuck in traffic and we had a light, light delay, we will not have the question answer session. If you listen with all your heart, all your questions will be answered. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand to your feet and let's give a warm welcome and honor Bishop Samuel Potter as it comes up. Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you all excited this morning? Amen. Amen. This is your day for anything to happen. And I want to assure you something good is about to happen. Come on, rejoice and give God some praise. Something good is about to happen. Turn to your neighbor and tell them something good is about to happen in your life. Praise be to God. Amen, amen, amen. We are a people of God and we are a people of faith. Amen. It is impossible to please God without faith. We have to learn to walk by faith. Walking by faith is not walking with blindness. You know, when I was growing up, people used to tell, tell us, you know, faith... Uh, you have to have blind faith. Talking about God, they would say you have to have blind faith. The Bible never 
encourages us or never teaches that we should have blind faith. In fact, the Bible says, when the word comes, light comes. All confusion is destroyed. Right? When the light comes, revelation comes. When light comes, you see with clarity. Now, when we walk by faith, we're walking by that light. So there is nothing called blind faith when you walk with God. God is not a blind person leading the blind. Come on now, amen? God is the one that will lead us and is leading us. So that's why we need to be careful to obey the scriptures, read the word, and let that word come into our hearts and bring illumination and understanding. So let's pray that God would give us that this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we give you glory, we give you praise. Holy Spirit God, have your way. And I pray that you would speak to each one of us, granting us revelation and understanding in the word. Open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our hearts to perceive what the Bible has to say, your word. I pray light will shine that we may walk on the paths of righteousness. That we may become a people of faith, Lord. People who know how to walk with the Lord. I pray this blessing upon everyone that is under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Please take your seats this morning. Let's get ready to learn something from the Word. <clears throat> Yesterday, we were talking about faith and we said how to receive faith. And we talked about weak faith. We talked about strong faith, how to develop from a weak faith to a strong faith and pastor talked about how faith cometh and you know faith comes now I want to draw your attention to how faith comes but nothing happens until faith is released faith has to be released for action to take place so let's go to um, Mark chapter 11 Mark chapter 11. Um, I think we're going to read from verse 12. Sorry. Okay, before I read from the Bible, I want to encourage you. Listen. Nothing is impossible with God. I said, nothing is impossible with God. In fact, before I start this, let me take you somewhere else. We'll come back here. I'm reminded of something, so I'll just go there and we'll start from there. Go with me to Numbers chapter 32 and verse 17. Sorry, Jeremiah, not Numbers. Jeremiah 32 verse 17. And the Lord God, our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and outstretched arm, there's nothing too hard for thee. I don't know what battles you're facing, what challenges you have ahead of you, what issues you're dealing with, what gates that are stopping you from moving forward. Let me tell you, every setback in life is a setup for your promotion. Every setback in your life is a setup for your promotion. So God is reminding us there is nothing too hard for the Lord. Hallelujah. So don't let the devil convince you today that whatever you're facing is going to stop you from moving into your destiny. Whatever you're facing, whether it's a sickness issue, whether it's a financial issue, whether it's a job issue, a family issue, nothing is going to stop you because nothing is too hard for the Lord. And if I can walk in partnership with God, God will help me to overcome that. God will give me the strength to overcome that. He will give me the ability to crash those walls down, calm the storm, hallelujah, and give you victory. Victory is ours in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. Now let's go to Jeremiah 32 verse 27, same chapter, and look what the Bible says. Behold, I am the Lord. This is God speaking. The God of all fish. Is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for me? There's nothing too hard for the Lord. You know, I remember, I want to start with the story. I remember one of my aunts who was admitted to the hospital. And uh, she was a Hindu. 
Our whole family was Hindu because my father came from a Hindu background. And uh, she was, her husband was a highly qualified neurosurgeon and she was in the emergency. She was in the ICU. And uh, they called us and said, we like you to pray. So they told us she, she was in the last stages of this leukemia. She was losing blood from every hole in her body. They could not stop it. Her mouth was filled with blood. So we walk in and they're not believers. And as we were driving to the place, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? And I was really talking to, I was driving and I was talking to the Lord. And I, I heard something inside me. He said, ask her if she wants to live. I said, that's very strange. Who wants to die? That sounds a very strange question, you know. But I said, I'll obey the Lord. Later on, I realized why God wanted me to ask that question. Because many times, people, when they've come to the fag end of that situation, like there is no more hope left, they, they give up. When you give up, no medicine is going to work for you. Nobody can help you if you give up. So you should understand, no matter where you are, never give up. Because God is fighting your battles. The battle is not yours, the battle is the Lord's. But God needs your participation. God needs your cooperation. God needs you to believe in Him so that His power may flow through you. So we go in and I, I speak to her and I say, um, do you want to live? And I was feeling very strange asking that question, but I just wanted to obey the Lord and said, do you want to live? And she nodded her head. And I wondered, why can't, even, why can't she even speak? She can say yes. But she was in a very bad situation. So I, I said, okay. But later they told me she was not able to speak because her mouth was filled with blood. So I, I just talked to her about the Lord and I said, listen, I'm going to pray for you. My God is a healer. My God is a miracle worker. And God can raise you up. And if you believe, you will be healed. And she nodded her head. We prayed for her and walked out. And there was a group of doctors that were talking to her husband and others. And my father was there. And they said, she doesn't have much time left. There's nothing we can do. There is no medication. There's no, nothing that we can do over here to keep her alive. And they said, she hardly has any time left. Maybe a few days. And they said, please send word to all the relatives to come and just say bye to her, you know. But we went and we prayed and I, and I declared God would heal her. And we came back. The second day she was still alive. Um, but there was no real improvement. But I think the third day she sat up. And she was now eating. They were surprised. So we went in to pray again. And the doctor said sometimes these things happen. But when they relax, <laughs> you know. Sometimes they kind of recover like this, but when it relapses, they will, they will have no time left. They just go like that. I said, no, no. I just came to encourage her, pray for her, and we left. Within a week, she was up. All right? And now, she was not only eating, she was able to move, and they took her at that time to Bombay where there was a, uh, a research, cancer research institute, which was being run by the Tatas. They got her examined and they said, there's no trace of cancer in her blood. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're talking about not just faith, the power of God. But the power of God is accessed by faith. And this is what she told us after, after, later on. She said, after you all prayed, I had an encounter. She actually saw a person in white garments come to her that night touch her and leave. And from there on, she began to improve. So she had a divine encounter. See, divine encounters are received through faith. You have to believe that God can do something for you. Not always does he have to come in a vision form. All we need is that word to put on flesh. When I believe, the word puts on flesh. Somebody say amen. So I have to encourage myself or encourage the brother or sister that I'm praying for to believe in what God said. The faith must be in the written word or the expressed word or the rhema that God gives you. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. The rhema word. See, when, 
as we, as we were being taught last yesterday afternoon by pastor, he said, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word, the rhema of God. So I have, this is my part. I have to play a part in positioning myself to pick up the rhema of God. Hallelujah. To pick up the rhema. For example, he told us how he went through this battle in his life. And as he was reading the Bible, he got that word. He got the rhema. Now I was going through a situation in my own life where I went through periods of excruciating pain in my body. It was so bad, I would come home sometimes in such pain and I would roll on the bed and weep aloud. But I never told anybody. The reason I didn't tell any most people is, except my wife, because I didn't know what level of faith they were at. And I didn't want their unbelief to affect my faith. So, so many times I don't share my problems with people unless I know that they are on the same page there's really one accord, not superficial oneness, but genuine oneness, and they really want the best for me. I don't announce it to the church and say, please pray for me, I'm going through this, because there are some in the church that want me to fail. I'm telling you the truth. Many, you, know, you know, all these innocent faces, some of them hate your pastor. I'm telling you the truth. Some of them are looking for them to fall. Some of them are looking forward to say, seeing them not, not progress. And they, but when they come to meet with the pastor, they have a nice smile, they have a good handshake, and it's like Judas kissing Jesus on the cheek. I'm telling you, this is, this is reality. This is the truth. That's why I don't share with many things, with the, my problems with people many times, except with those that I know that genuinely love me and want the best for me, and I know they're on the same page with me, and they can exercise their faith, and they're believing for, the, for good things to happen in my life. So I was going through this pain for a long time. I, I would get, sometimes get on the stage and I would be so much in pain, I cannot tell anybody. I would just sit down, just sit down and do nothing. Sit on the stage while they were worshiping. I could not stand, so I would sit down. So this was happening and I was confessing the word. I was praising God. People prayed for me. I mean, I prayed for myself. I fasted. I did everything. But it didn't break through. I could not have, I did not receive a breakthrough in this matter. So one day I remember, I know exactly what happened. I was driving home. I was sitting in the back seat. My driver was driving. I picked my Bible and I began to go through the healing scriptures. And in Matthew chapter 18, 8 verse 17, it says, He took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. I, I began to read that. And when I came to, He took, something grabbed me. It gripped my heart. When he took it, what am I doing holding on to it? Is the understanding I got. So I read that scripture many times. I confessed that scripture many times. But that day, it became a reality. It became alive in my heart. So I took that scripture, went home, and I said, Lord, no more am I going to carry this because you took it. Why should I be bearing this burden when you took that burden away from me? And I knelt down and I began to thank God and I began to praise him. And let me tell you, that was the end of that matter. Hallelujah. The, remember what I said yesterday. I said, the word of God is God's power. The word comes with power locked into it. But it is through revelation and my faith that I unlock the power in that word. And I begin to receive it and enjoy the blessing. Because you can be reading the same Bible and living in poverty while the other person is reading the same Bible and enjoying the blessing of God. See, remember I told you yesterday, I said, I don't know if I told you all, but you know, um, or I was just talking to pastor, I was with Pastor Winston's church in Chicago, where we were fellowshipping. And um, one day he's, he stood up and he said, look what the Lord has done. I said, what has he done? He told us the story that when he was, he came to, did I tell you the story? Okay, so that he came with $200 and all that. So. I said, Lord, what Bible is he reading? And what Bible am I reading? Because he is reading the Bible with revelation that came to him from God. Amen. So if I don't have the revelation, I can still be bound in whatever way the devil wants me to be bound. And I could be bound in financial issues. I could be bound with sickness in my body. I could be bound in various ways. But Jesus said, the truth shall come and the truth shall set you free. 
So when truth comes, truth is the word. When the word comes, the word illuminates and the word sets you free from whatever the devil is holding you back from. So what we need is that revelation and understanding. Because once we receive the rhema, we have received faith. Amen. But now we have to learn to release that faith. Hallelujah. Faith is received, but faith does not work until it is released. Say amen. amen. So now let's go to, let's go to, um, what do we say? Mark chapter 11, verse 12. On the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if haply he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Stop. Read that carefully. He came, if haply he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered. You answer when there's a question, right? So there is an issue here. The, the tree, Jesus is talking to the tree. He's answering. He's not talking to people. He's talking to the tree. He's answering a question. He said, no man eat fruit of the no man eat fruit of the hereafter forever, and his disciples heard it. Now, and we know what happened, so let's go to verse 20. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursedest is with, withered away. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. Or some translations say, Have the God kind of faith. So Jesus was now teaching them how to walk or how to operate in faith. And that's important for us because we've got to learn how to walk by faith, how to operate in faith because we are people of faith. It is impossible to please God without faith. Say amen. Okay. For verily I say unto you that, thou, that whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now this is very important. Here in this passage, you will see the word say at least three times. Say or say. Whosoever shall say, underline that, unto this mountain, speaking to a situation, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith, underline that, shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith, underline that word. Three times the word say is being used here. Now watch what he's saying. Saying is very important, but the underlying truth that we have to capture here is without doubt in your heart. We're going to come back here, go to Romans 10. Verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we speak. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Something has to be believed before it is confessed for it to manifest. Are you with me everybody? Believe, speak and see the manifestation. That's the, that, that is the system. Okay. So the challenge for many of us is not the saying part, the believing part. Saying is easy. That's why people say, when the pastor says, say I'm I was healed by a strap. We all say, I'm, I was healed by a strap, but you're not healed. We're saying it. Saying something is not that difficult. But saying something without faith in your heart does not produce results. That's why it is so important for us to understand to receive faith. Faith cometh. It takes time to build that faith. Say Amen. 
It takes time to build that faith. As I was explaining yesterday, I talked about weak faith. The moment you receive a rhema, it may come in. Sometimes it's an explosion. Sometimes it's not that explosive, but it comes in a picture form or it comes in a thought form and you capture it. But then if you don't spend the time to build it, it can be stolen by the enemy. It can be uh, doused by the, the fire can be doused by any situation that you're facing or people can talk you out of your faith. So it is important for us to build our faith. So God says to Joshua, Joshua, you are facing an incredible situation now. There are, I'm sending you to a land that I've already given to you, but it's filled with what? Giant, Nephilims, giants, right? And the cities are walled. So you are going up to do the impossible. Remember something. We're, we are called to do the impossible. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're called to do the impossible. We are called to do what is called impossible. Because the power with which we do it is not our power. It's God's power. So God never said, Joshua, pray. He said, meditate. But meditation is also a form of prayer. Because what you're doing is, you're dwelling in the word. Hallelujah. You're dwelling on the promise that God has given. He says, build the right image. Build the right image. Because right now, you might have image inside you that, you're going to, that your situation is going to get worse. Right now, you may have an image inside you that's saying that you will not make progress in your life. That your situation in, the fi in, in financial terms is not going to get better, it's going to get worse. Now, everyone, let me tell you, everyone has certain pictures in our heart. And someone said this, you always move in the direction of your most dominant thought. You always move in the direction of your most dominant thought. That means a thought that you hold is what guides you like a GPS to go to that place. What is a thought? A thought is an image. A thought is an image. Because remember, we don't think in letters and words. We think in pictures. Are you all with me? Example, if I said car, do you see on the screen of your mind C-A-R or do you see a vehicle with four wheels on it. What do you see? You see a picture of a car, right? You don't see C-A-R. Am I right? Am I right? Now, if I said black car, immediately I've painted a picture. I've used words to paint that picture for you to make it look black. Is that true? Now, if I said BMW, what would happen? I'm changing the brand now, right? With words, I'm changing all this. Am I getting through to you? Right. So images. Now, that image is what you hold. Every one of us moves by images. And so when I'm reading the Bible, I should not read it like a fairy tale. I should read it as a word from God. And let the Holy Spirit pick those words to paint the picture in my heart. So now is the challenge. The challenge is my mind, is the battle is in the mind. The mind is saying, don't you feel sick? The mind is saying, don't you know that is the temp you're registering fever on the thermometer? It's registering that you have fever. Don't you know that the doctor said this? Don't you know? And so it's painted a picture. And the picture either drives you, can drive you to fear. And that's why many people died of co in, during COVID out of fear more than the sickness. Because they imagined themselves to be dead. So they died. We always move in the direction of your most dominant thought. So it's important for us that we don't feed ourselves. Remember what pastor said last, black out everything that would negate your faith. Everything that would, that would corrupt your, your thought life. Any, you know, you should be selective of what you hear. Jesus said, take heed what you hear. Not everything is good. And let me tell you, not everything that is good is of God. So you have to be selective. It may be good, but it may not be of God. Remember, the fruit that a Eve ate in the garden was called what? The fruit of what? Good and evil. 
It was not just evil. That's why even in the world, you will find some good things. Talk to me, somebody. Even in the demonic realm, they have some good things that they do. To convince you that it is good, it must be God, and they trap people and take them away to their destruction. So not everything good is of God. So don't judge things by your mind, but by your heart. If you're born again, you have a conscience. If you're born again, you have the right, you have the spirit of God that will guide you to lead and teach you and guide you the way you should walk. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So pictures, the, when I'm receiving the word, those pictures will build something in me. So faith cometh by hearing. And hearing the rhema word of God. The rhema word becomes a picture for me. I see myself healed. I see myself blessed. I see myself healed. Praise God. You know, there was a lady, a medical doctor by the name Dr. Lillian Yeoman in the past. And uh, after she retired, I think she retired or something. But she was a strong proponent of divine healing. She spoke a lot about that. She believed in divine healing. So she established a, I don't know what it's called, whether it was a hospital or some home where all the terminally sick people were welcome and they would be taken care of and nursed. But all the time, the word was being played on the speakers. And one day, there was a huge commotion in the hospital. There was this elderly lady ran down the stairs saying, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm totally healed, I'm set free. She came in with terminal sickness, given up to die. But something happened that as she listened to the word, faith came. That day, the picture changed on the inside. The image changed. She, the image of, I can't die. Hallelujah. I cannot die. Amen. I am alive. I am the healed of the Lord. So later when they examined, she was completely healed of whatever that was killing her body. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So as you keep listening to the word, as you keep reading the word, watch to hear what the spirit of God has to say. That's how faith comes. Now, we're talking about not only receiving the faith, but releasing our faith. Okay? So here we see, with the heart man believeth. So believing is not of the mind. Believing is of the spirit. Believing is seeing. What do you see? Ask yourself, what do I see about my future? Where do you see yourself in five years from today? Where do you think God is leading you? What is the vision that God has been birthing in your heart? It may not be clear. It may be a glimpse. But once you get that, start spending time and spending time in prayer and in meditation because that has to become stronger and stronger and stronger to the point. Now wait. It's not going to manifest just because you have a picture. That now has to be spoken. Say amen. Now God gave Abram a word. He said that he would have a child. Out of your own loins, he will be burned. He brought him out of the tent, okay? And he showed him the stars. He said, count the stars if you can. So that's how many descendants you will have. That's great. Then in chapter 17, we read that God made a covenant. And on that day, in chapter 17, after many, many, many years, when he was almost 100 years old, what did the Bible say? Today, I'm changing your name. It took 25 years for the image to be solidified. To be stood. Now he says, I'm changing your name from Abram to Abraham, a father of many nations. Now watch what happened. From that day, what did Abram have to say? My name is what? Say it again, louder. Say it louder. He had to not only see it, but now he had to say it. I am Abraham. Before Isaac was born, he had to declare. But the declaration came from a heart that was convinced and confident. So don't blurt things and hope that it will happen just because you said it. Now, there are two, two issues that you have to understand here. There is a saying 
Okay, watch carefully. There is a saying to establish the image. Then there's a saying for creation. It doesn't mean you don't say something bef before it manifests. Oh, no, no, no. Let me correct myself. People think because I say it, it has to happen. Yes, it has to happen. But it has to be said from a heart that believeth. With the heart, man believeth. And with the mouth, it is spoken. Amen? Okay. Now, let's say for example, you're battling with some sickness. So you start saying, I was healed by his stripes. I was healed by his stripes. Are you healed? There's no evidence of it. So should I not say it? I should. Why? Because I have received the rhema and I'm building my faith to become strong. Then comes a time and a day in my life where now I am fully convinced and I'm confident. Now I don't say it to build my faith. Now I say it to release my faith. There's a saying for building your faith and there's a saying to release your faith. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now watch this. In the book of Genesis chapter 1, Okay, chapter 1. Let's go there. We'll come back here. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning God created heaven and earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The Spirit of God was doing what? Moving upon the face of the water. The word is brooding. Brooding is what? Meditation. The Holy Spirit was meditating. The Lord God Almighty was meditating. He never said anything until he saw the picture clearly as to what he wanted. Are you with me, everybody? I said, are you with me? Talk to me, somebody. All right? So he, was, he didn't speak. He waited. The process of meditation is important before you speak for creation. So now after spending that time, then God said, let there be light. He looked at darkness. Watch this. He looked at darkness and he said, he didn't say, oh my God, how dark is it? It is. Did he say that? No. He said, let there be light. Why? He, he, now he's, what he was speaking was an act of creation. And you and I have been made in the image and likeness of God. Can I hear an amen? And Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1 says, Be ye imitators of God. Hallelujah. Be ye imitators of God. So I need to learn how to function like my father. I need to learn how to function like my father. How does my father speak? How does God speak? God does not speak what, he's, what is existent. God speaks what he wants to see exist. He does not deny darkness. Come on. Because it says it was dark. He's not denying darkness. But he does not want darkness. What does he want? He wants light. So what does he say? He doesn't talk to darkness. He talks to light. He says, let there be light. What do you want in your body? What do you want in your family? What do you want in your finances? What are you looking for in your future? How do you want your business to prosper? Don't keep brooding over the lack. Don't keep meditating upon the negatives. Don't keep looking at the bad situation. That is true. That is a fact of life. But you don't want that fact to be established and continue to dominate you. Is that true? You want to change that. You want that sick body to become whole. You want that financial situation to change in your favor. You want that money to come and show up in your bank account. You want to be employed. You want to be promoted. What do you want? What do you desire? What has God promised you? As you read the Bible and as you meditate on that word, that word should form a picture. I see myself healed. I see myself blessed. I see myself blessed to the point where I'm a blessing to others. I'm a blessing to the nations. Hallelujah. Do you see yourself like that? But many times you can because you see your present position in life, your present vocation in life, your job situation is so bad. You are saying, how can I even think about being a blessing to the nation when I'm not myself blessed? Well, that's a fact. Yes, but that can change. How can it change? Don't throw all the responsibility on God. 
God wants it to change. God desires for it to change. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to be a blessing. But you now have to cooperate with God and learn to imitate your father. Hallelujah. But so what does God say to Joshua? Joshua, meditate on the word day and night. Day and night. What does meditation involve? I told you yesterday. Meditation involves hearing, seeing and saying. This is important. Hearing, see, in the process of meditation, you're hearing, that's how faith comes. You're seeing, that's how faith is strengthened. And you're saying, that's how you're building your faith. From weak faith to strong faith. I will possess that land. That land is mine. That whatever God promised, that divine health is my portion. Hallelujah. To be blessed is my portion in God. See, through wrong teaching and exposure to wrong exposition of the word, people think it is wrong to be prosperous. So it's difficult for them to believe that God will prosper them because they think somehow, like when I was growing up, I had, nobody said it, but the impression they gave me was, if you want to be holy, you have to be poor. Come on. I mean, I'm sure you, all of you understand what I'm saying. That rich people cannot be holy. Rich people cannot be close to God. And so people, that's why in our days and even now, many young people don't want to serve God or come into full-time ministry because they think if I come into full-time ministry, I can never be rich. See how the devil has deceived the body of Christ. Who told you that? And I began to question myself and I began to study the, you know, and sit down and meditate. And I said, okay, Lord, this is what religion has taught us. The religion has taught us that a rich man cannot be close to God because we, we connected that to something in the New Testament where Jesus said, it's easier for a camel to go through the needle of an eye than for a rich man to go to into heaven, into the kingdom of God. Is that true? So we interpreted that by saying what? Rich people can never enter the kingdom of God. But that's the wrong interpretation. So how can that be, Pastor? Let me tell you. Let me ask you a question. Was Abraham rich? You're not convinced. I said, was Abraham rich? I'm going to use an oxymoron. He was filthy rich. Was Abraham rich? In fact, Genesis chapter 13 verse 2 says he was very rich. Genesis 24, 35 says my, ma my God has blessed my master immensely with silver, with gold, with cattle. Some people have taught, some denominations have taught that it is wrong to own or wear gold. Have you had that? Have you heard that kind of teaching? Now, I'm not criticizing anybody. But if you sit under that teaching, you'll begin to hate the gold. Get ready. You've got to walk on gold. Don't despise what God wants to give you. You'll be surprised. God doesn't hurt those. All that God doesn't want is the gold should not possess your heart. He should possess your heart. So my question is, was Abraham close? Was, was Abraham rich yes was abraham close to god yes. what does the bible say about abraham a friend of god oh wait wait you you just said that you can be rich and also be holy right so this contradicts everything i mean there's a practical example i'm looking at in the bible where it says abraham was very rich and he was very close to god because the riches never grabbed his heart he was willing to give the most precious thing, not money, his own son. Of old age, he was willing to offer up to God. God said, that's the heart I want. All these things are immaterial. The next question is this. Was David a rich man? Was he? In fact, the gold he gave to build the temple this was a few years back, not now. They said was worth personal contribution. I'm not talking about the other metals. Only gold was worth more than $100 billion. Was he a poor man? 
What does the Bible say about David? A man after my own heart. Now these myths have to be cancelled in your thinking. God is not against you being rich. God is against riches holding you in captivity. God is the one that prospers. Question. Was, would you consider Joseph a rich man? Yes. Would you consider him a rich man, yes. Joseph? Was he close to the heart of God? Yes. He had such a close relationship. What about Nehemiah? Do you think Nehemiah was a poor man? No. You read the Bible. Towards the end, you will see that every day he was feeding 150 plus people, feeding them. With, and he gives the number of lambs that are slain, number of goats, number of fowls and everything. And he says, all that was from his own pocket, not from the government. Somebody say Amen. Every day. That's how rich Nehemiah was. And Nehemiah was so close. He, he had a deep relationship with God. So riches are not, God is not against you being rich. God wants you to be blessed to become a blessing. So I'm teaching you today that you can believe in God. Now don't let riches, don't let the, the riches capture your heart that you only go after riches. Go after God and riches will go after you. Hallelujah. The blessings will follow you. The good things in life will come after you. Hallelujah. But the image has to change. That's what I'm talking about. The word has to change that image inside you. So when, when God said to Joshua, meditate on the word day and night, what was the purpose? Not to turn him into a religious zealot, but to turn him into a victor and a winner and a champion. The word can change you to become a champion. The word can mold you to become a winner in life. No matter what challenge you're facing, you are an overcomer. The word has the ability to change that image inside you. Yes, I will have a church that is prosperous, that is large. Not because I'm going to boast that my church is large, but impactful. Because I'm not preaching to impress anybody. I'm preaching and working hard to impact your lives. So if God opens a door for you, not just here, some of the place, some of the country, go ahead and do it. Not because you want to boast and say, well, I've got a church here and I've got a church there and try to compare your ministry with others. No, it's because you see that image is being birthed through your meditation in the word and to con you, you now have a conviction. And when the confidence is built, just step out and do what God is saying. It shall come to pass. It's, nothing can stop you now. But don't step out until you are confident you have that conviction in you. This is of God. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. You may not know exactly how to go about it. The promise has been given. But through meditation, what happens? Watch this. Through meditation, what happens is you become stronger and you become confident in that promise. And yet you may not know how to do it. That's okay. That's okay. Because after a season, God says to Joshua, now it's time to take, take over Jericho. But he doesn't know how to do it. And this is what he does. He does, I don't know if he had a count, meeting with the, the, the council of the leaders of the military. Or the generals and brig, brigadiers and others. But he did have an encounter in the Holy Spirit. He left everything and he went away to spend time with the Lord. He was alone when he had an encounter with the Lord. And that's where he received his instructions. Somebody say amen. amen. So last night, I think, I think yesterday I said, he said, God said to Joshua, see. What does seeing do? Builds an image. He said, when he said see, he was not asking Joshua to see what is apparent to the natural eye. He said, capture the picture I'm giving you. The picture is Jericho is already yours. Healing is already yours. Prosperity is already yours. Elevation is already yours. Job is already yours. Hallelujah. You are blessed. I am blessed. Can, can somebody shout, I'm blessed? I'm blessed. Say it again. I pray that God will change that and, and root out all negative images that are in your heart and replace them with positive images birthed from the Word of God. Forget your pedigree, 
Forget your past. Because, listen to me. What the enemy does is always tries to bring to focus our past failures. And past failures keep telling you what makes you think you can be a success tomorrow. Let me tell you something. That's the modest apprendi of the devil. You can never drive a car by looking into the rear view mirror. You can't go forward. By looking at the rear, rear, uh, rear view mirror, you can only go backwards. Stop looking to the back. Stop looking to your past. Paul said, forgetting that which is behind, I press forward. I might have failed in life a thousand times. I might have tried to pick myself and I fall flat on my face. It's okay because the battle or the fight is not over until I win. I might have fallen, bruised myself. I might have fallen, I might be bleeding. I might have fallen, I might be in pain. It doesn't matter. A righteous man may fall seven times, but he will rise up again. So you, the, the battle is not over until you succeed, until you're healed, until you're blessed, until you become a blessing to somebody else, and until this church begins to bless many others. This church was not established just so that we can be a better church than others. No, there is a purpose. There is a design that God has. This church has to be impactful and impact the entire northern region and wherever God is taking you. Let nothing stop you from establishing churches, ministries, Bible colleges, wherever God opens a door. See yourself as a church that is pioneering and opening doors for many people to follow through. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. You're not just another pastor. You're not just another church. You are a church on a mission. You're a church with a vision. You're a church on a, uh, with a purpose. This is not just to please a thousand, two thousand people over here. No, you have a voice. You have an anointing. You have a power to move forward. And you shall go forward. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Now, as I say that, I want you to capture that image. I want you to join your hands and hearts with your pastors and say, we're walking with you, pastor. We're run if you run, we run with you. If you walk, we walk with you. But we see, we capture the mission, the vision, the idea, the thought, the image you're giving to a man of God. We will move forward. We will move forward. We will not stop. Kohima is, is, is not the only place where we serve God. Are you with me? When your pastor succeeds, rejoice. You know why? He's your model. I tell my people, by God's grace, we, we, drive, some, we drive some nice cars. Uh, I don't want to mention, but we drive some really nice cars that make people envious. Uh, I tell my people, I say, look, when you see me drive those cars, don't envy just say, thank you, Lord, for my pastor. Because if you can do it for my pastor, you're doing it for me. I am next in line. If it can happen in the pastor's life, that means I'm under his anointing. I'm under his preaching. See, the, the, the pastor carries an anointing. A pastor carries a grace. So connect to the grace. You disconnect through envy, through jealousy bad-mouthing, talking negative things about your man of God. That's why you can be sitting Sunday after Sunday and not prosper at all. And the more you fail, the more jealous you become. But if you can only say, Lord, I want to, I know I'm, I'm not really happy, but Lord, I want to say thank you because he's my man of God. He's speaking to my life and he's doing amazing, Lord, you're doing amazing things in his life and you put me under his anointing. See, when you, listen to me, listen to me. Why do you not, why do you have to shut down people from listening to people that will hurt or corrupt your thinking? Listen to me. Even if they're good speakers, you have to be discerning. Why? Because when a man speaks, he's not just speaking words. He's imparting a spirit. You're actually catching a spirit. That's why you will find, let me tell you, and I'm not judging anybody. If the pastor is living an immoral life, you will find a lot of people in the church living immoral lives. He's not advocating immorality. immorality. He's actually preaching holiness, but it's not working because although he's speaking holiness, he carries the spirit of immorality. People don't know this. 
And they wonder why it's happening. Because a spirit is being released. There's freedom for that spirit to move around because the angel loss of the church is letting it happen. What did, what did, what, read the book of Revelation. All the negative things that were happening, Jesus came to each one of the angels. That's the pastor who said, you know what? I appreciate for what you're doing here, but you know, I do not like. I, the judgment will come if you don't stop this in your church. Because it was being released by the man. The man in charge. So being a pastor is not just somebody who can just speak well. You can go and learn how to speak. You know, there, there are colleges, there are universities, there are workshops you can attend and you can become a good speaker, eloquent speakers. But pastoring is not eloquent, you know, uh, being eloquent in your speech. You carry a spirit. I said you carry a grace and not one, but several. So pray for your pastors that the more they succeed, the more you will succeed. Yes. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Never envy them. One day he comes and says, look, you know, I had to go to Germany and by God's grace, I really enjoyed the flight. I was in the first class suite, you know, I could sleep well and I went there. I was well rested and I could do a good, who does he think? That's why he's taking all my tights. <laughs> See, he is using, when I'm suffering, I can't pay my rent. I am struggling to pay my debt. And he says, God will bless you and takes the money and he flies in first class. Now, I know you're laughing, but is that not the truth? Come on, talk to me, somebody. God help you. Never envy the man you respect. And don't be in a church where you don't respect and trust your man of God. Find the man, because everybody needs a mentor. Everybody needs a spiritual father. Everybody needs somebody to cover them. Choose, let the Holy Spirit help you to choose that man, choose that anointing and stay faithful there because it won't be long before God will begin to lift you up. Amen. But listen, if the pastor himself is struggling and there is no evidence of the blessing, I don't care how much he talks about the blessing, it's not going to manifest in your life. Because he doesn't carry the grace. So pray for your pastors that they will prosper. No, no, I'm not talking about spiritual prosperity. They're already prospering spirit. I'm talking that they will be extremely rich. Come on. Are you with me, everybody? They will be extremely rich and nothing will stop them from fulfilling the vision that God has birthed in their heart. Money should be the least of their concerns when it, when it has to do planting another church in a nearby city. Or planting a Bible school somewhere else. Or going doing something else God has spoken to them, given them a dream or whatever. You must back them up. And when you do that, you attract the blessing that is upon them. You know, remember last night, I think it was the pastor who was talking about connecting to the anointing. Every time you entertain negative thoughts about your man of God, man or woman of God, every time you say something negative, every time you do something negative, or you associate with people that are negative, you actually disconnect in the spirit. And what happens as a result is you will be coming Sunday after Sunday and whenever else there is a meeting, sitting right up in the front, smiling at the pastor, but never enjoying the blessing that he enjoys in his life. Why? Because there's a disconnect. There is a disconnect. So, I am so happy to see pastors blessed. My desire is to see pastors blessed because they have to be the role models for their churches. Hallelujah. And I'm not talking about being rich for the sake of being rich. Being rich financially being rich spiritually first in their relationship with God, rich in their ministry, rich financially, rich wealth-wise, and fulfilling the mission and the vision that God has birthed in their hearts. Joshua was an, on an assignment. And Joshua, as he meditated, God gave him the way to possess. See, and when he became negligent about seeking God, 
he lost the battle with AI. And so he had to go back to God and say, God, please talk to me. And he had to work with that and he had to root that out and you know the story, right? But the point I'm trying to make is we have to first settle this in our hearts. The picture has to change. Say amen. The picture has to change. Once it's changed, what did, he, what did we read? In Romans chapter 10 and also in, um, in um, uh, Mark chapter 11. Let's go there again. In Mark chapter, Mark chapter 11, um, verse 24. Whosoever shall say unto... Yeah. No, it's 23, please. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. Once the picture is established, now you speak. This speaking, you shall decree a thing, and it shall be established, says the book of Job, right? You shall decree a thing, it shall be established. When will it be established? When you decree. But when should you decree? After the image has been established and solidified in your heart. Your faith has now been, con has been established. Now you're convinced and you're confident. Now you speak. Watch this. I don't know if you have had, had experience in casting out devils. <laughs> so if you're not confident in casting out devils, you can keep talking to the devil and the devil will keep talking back to you, but he will not obey what you say. And you begin to wonder. I mean, we, <laughs> there's a funny story. Uh, we had a Bible school a long time back, and uh, we would train them in how to teach them on the script from the word of it, how to pray for the sick and all this, and how to cast out devils. And we would take them on crusades to give them experience, exposure to do this. And in one of these crusades, after the meeting was over, people were being ministered, the students were ministering, and there was this demon possessed person that was there, and they were trying to cast the devil out. There was no teacher or no lecturer around and I was far away and I, I, I came by and I heard these guys. They were all around that lady and they were casting the devil out and they were saying, go devil in the name of Jesus. And they, they were so frustrated. At, the, at last, you know, one of the guys said, please devil, leave her. <laughs> See, they don't know. They thought just by saying it's going to happen. You have to have the confidence. What, does the, what did the devil say? I know who Jesus is. I know who Paul is. But who the heck are you? Who are you? Because the guy, see, when you know who you are and you're confident in what God said, it'll be registered in hell. Thank God that your names have been written in the Lamb's book of life. Don't be happy just for that. Your name must also be recorded in hell. That every time your name is mentioned, there is terror. Yes. There is a movement in him. It's a, oh my God. Don't, don't, go too, don't go too close to that place. It's, it's too hot. Your name should be recognized in hell as well. For the right reasons. Amen. Hallelujah. So when we speak, we need to speak with confidence. Not Hope, I, I hope it'll work out. No, it has to work. So now I need to spend my time. That's the reason why I need to spend so much time praying in the Holy Ghost, building up my most holy faith. I need to meditate on that scripture. I need to take time off and go into the presence of God and spend hours, sometimes hours and days fast. All this is for what? Building the right image. And erasing the images that were birthed through circumstances, erasing the images the devil has placed in my heart or my mind, erasing all the images that people have planted in my heart growing up as a child. All those have to be worked on. So I need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit that he can work and remove all that and get rid of all that and replace the images. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is so important. And you know, so many times we do these things, but we don't give too much cognizance. I don't know over here, but back where I come from, when a woman becomes pregnant, what they do is they take pictures of a little baby and post it on the walls. Do they do that here? Yeah. They, what are they doing? The same principle. They're seeing that baby. They're observing the baby. So every day they're looking at it. They're getting that picture. Now we're adding to that the power of the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. 
I told you about the story about the woman that took a pillow and put it under her bed, under her dress and began to walk around saying, I'm thank you, Lord, for, I, for the baby that you blessed me with. Amen. So what are we doing? We are cooperating with the Holy Spirit to re erase the, 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 the image of barrenness with the image of fruitfulness. We're erasing the image of lack with the image of plenty. It takes time. When you sow a seed, you don't harvest the next day, right? But when the harvest has come, you don't wait. Now you take the sickle. The, the tongue is a sickle. You now have to go to harvest. Now you speak forth. But this time when I speak, I'm not speaking to establish my faith or become confident in my faith. Now I'm saying it to create it. You shall speak. You shall say this to, this, to the mountain. You shall speak to your problem. You know, this word was becoming strong in my understanding. And uh, one day, we were going to a village. And it was getting late. We were driving in a car. And uh, we had to go on a patch of rough road. And, uh, you know, it was raining, drizzling and raining. And this was, we had an old car. I mean, it was not one of those. Now we have all these things that are computerized. But that time, we had these cars which are just mechanical cars. Now, hardly any computers, chips and all that stuff. Now, in, how many know of a car called Ambassador? Have you seen an Ambassador? Okay. Uh, they have what they call the distributor cap, where the, the plug, spark plugs are connected, and the spark comes in, and then the combustion takes place. Now, when it rains in those days, one of the problems with these cars was if moisture went into the carburetor, into the distributor cap, it would stop. So you had to be careful that you know, no, no moisture, not, not wet, just moisture getting in would stop the car, stall the car. So we were on this road. It was already late. We were late for the meeting. It was dark, and we were riding in the car. And every few seconds, it was stopping. We had to start. We'd stop. Now, every time we stopped, we had to open the bonnet, take the, car, uh, the distributor cap, and wipe it clean with a dry cloth, put it back on, and drive for a few, maybe a few minutes, and it would stall again. This kept happening. I got so irritated once. I said, guys, get off. We all got off the car. We said, stand back. I stood back and I pointed my finger at the car and said, car, you are not going to stop us from going to this meeting. I said, in the name of Jesus now, I'm speaking to you. Don't look strangely at me. God also spoke to things that did not have life. You know something? Everything has ears. Even that which you think is not life has ears to hear stones can hear stones can praise god they have ears and they have mouths so i began to speak to the car i said you are not going to stop us you're going to go and we will get to the meeting and we'll go home got into the car and said start now we started it didn't stop the reason i'm sharing this is to let you know the power in the word not the power in the man because the power is not in the man, the power is in the word. The power is in the word, but the power in the word is unlocked through your faith. Through your faith. It's important that we understand. This is why I am spending so much time teaching you on not only faith cometh, but faith develop it. If there's a word like that, you know. To develop your faith before you release your faith. It's important that we understand that. Now, as we come to a close, let me take you to the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel, chapter 17. Now, we know the story that the giant Goliath was taunting the armies of Israel. 40 days and 40 nights, nobody was able to go up against him. And he kept saying, if there's anyone, let him come down into the valley. We're going to fight. Whoever wins will become the leader and that army or that nation becomes slaves. Nobody moved. Until one day, a young lad who was probably around 17 years old with no battle training, no training in the military. All the training he had was living with sheep. Come on now. 
All that he had was what? Living with sheep. But while he lived with sheep, he lived with God. No matter what your vocation is, you don't have to be called into full-time ministry to spend time with God. Jo sorry, David was not a full-time minister. He was a shepherd boy, but he was a man of God. He spent time developing his relationship with God. Say amen. He comes to the battlefield. He sees what's going on. He says, how dare, how dare, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Wait. Why is he using the word uncircumcised Philistine? You need to realize that David was covenant conscious. I talked about covenant last night. That's why he was saying, listen, I am circumcised, which means what? I have a covenant with God. And according to the covenant, the battles are not mine. Everything that, that belongs to God is mine and everything that belongs to me belongs to God. So he has to back me up. That is the confidence that was built into his system. So he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He's brought before the king and the king says this. Saul said to David, thou art not able to go up against this Philistine to fight with him for thou art but a youth. He's looking at the outward man. He's saying, you can't do it. Look at your background. Have you ever fought a battle? Do you even know how to use a spear? Do you know how it, what it would be like to wear the armor? Do you know, have you ever handled a shield? No. Every question that Saul was asking, the answer was no. But yet this man was saying, I can do it. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Can I build a big, big industry? Can I build a big business? Yes, with Christ. Can I build a big ministry? Yes, with Christ. Can I be blessed? Yes, with Christ. Get the image right. I have, see, the point I'm trying to make is this. We have to have a deep, intimate fellowship with God, which is developing our faith in Him and in His Word. Say Amen. Hallelujah. All right. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught him by the beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he had defied the armies of the living God. Can you understand that what he's saying is not coming out of his head, but out of his heart? He said, sir, I'm recounting my blessings. I'm not looking at the challenge. I'm not looking at Goliath. I'm looking at my God who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the bear. The same God will deliver this man into my hands. It's not something that he's trying to say because somebody's telling him to say. Like pastor says, I prayed for you. Now say I was healed by stripes. Uh, I was healed by stripes. Yes, I was healed by stripes. Yeah, 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 pastor, I believe I was healed by stripes. You walk out of the, the, the house of God. Next day you're having coffee with your friend. He says, how are you doing? Oh man, what can I say? The doctor said this. Huh, really? What did the pastor say? Have you forgotten that? See, out of the abundance of the heart, what was coming out of David's heart was out of the abundance of the heart he was speaking. The God that delivered me from the paw of the lion and the bear will also deliver me from this uncircumcised Philistine. I am telling you, I don't care what battle you're facing in life, what challenge you're facing, the God that you worship will get you over that. The God that you worship will heal your body. The God that you worship will elevate you. The God that you worship will give you success in every endeavor you put your hands unto. He declared in his word, whatever I put my hands unto shall prosper. Hallelujah. But do you believe it? No, no, no. I know you will say yes, but that's only with your mind. You have to have the confidence. No, every time you read the word faith, think of these two words, conviction and confidence. That will give you more clarity. Do I have that conviction? Do I have that confidence? Yes, I can do it. Because God is backing me. The Lord is with me. When the Lord is for me, who can be against me? Say amen. Hallelujah. And David said, Moreover, the Lord had delivered me out of the paw of the lion, out of the paw of the roar, but the bear. He will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Now, I want to read this. When he was coming to face, this, face Goliath, 
The Philistine looked about in verse 42 and saw David. He disdained him for he was but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? I mean, who do you think you're coming against? It seems like you think I'm a dog, okay? And he says, And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. What was he doing? He was calling upon his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me and I will give thy flesh to the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. And then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of the host, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Watch this. The battle is now being fought in the mind and with words before the actual battle. You have to win your battles in your mind, in your heart first. You must declare your victory with your mouth before it is established. But you cannot declare it in hope. You have to declare it in faith. What you hope for becomes faith as you develop the picture and begin to work on it to, become, to come to a place of confidence. Now you take action. So what David was saying was not something was drummed into him. What David was saying was what was coming out of the abundance of his heart. He said, today... Praise God. I am coming to you in the name of the Lord of the armies of Israel. Praise God. And then he says, this day. Somebody shout this day. He didn't say tomorrow. Today is the day of your deliverance. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the time. Today is the day of your healing. Today is the day of your deliverance. Today is the day of your promotion. Today. Receive it now in Jesus' name. Let the image, let this, this day be the day when all those negative images are erased by the power of God in your mind and in your heart. Let today be the day when God's images, the birth from the word of God, are established in your heart. Let it be today. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will smite you and I will take thine head from thee and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth and all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. Hallelujah to Jesus. I said hallelujah to Jesus. I said hallelujah. Today is the day you shall experience victory. Today is the day you shall crush the head of the enemy under your feet. Today is the day you will walk out from this place with confidence and now you will declare. Before, watch this, before David used the sling, he used his mouth. He declared it. Declare your victory. Don't say, I hope I'll pass this exam. Declare the victory. I have passed the exam. I know. I, I have, have, you seen the new, have you seen the question paper? No. But I know I'm, I'm, I have passed in flying colors. Hallelujah. I know. Because God is the one that will give me the right answers. God will put the words in my mouth to, be, to succeed in this issue, in this regard. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I said hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Declare after your faith has been established. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. But what you believe with your heart, you believe unto righteousness. But then you declare it unto salvation. So faith is received and faith is released for the miracle to manifest. Both are extremely important issues and steps in our life. Have you learned anything today? Yes. Come on, have you got, got something today? Yes. So we have to learn to equip ourselves, sit in His presence, and let the Word begin to work in our hearts. Don't see yourself dying. Don't see yourself losing. Don't see yourself broke, busted, disgusted. See yourself blessed. Turn to your neighbor and say this. Do you know that you're blessed to be sitting by my side? You know why? Because I'm blessed. Do you realize you're sitting beside a blessed person? See, that confidence has to come. And sometimes the confidence becomes so strong that it can be misinterpreted as arrogance. 
please don't misunderstand. I'm not trying to come across with any kind of arrogant attitude, but my faith is in the word of God. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Don't let the world paint pictures in your heart. Let the Holy Spirit and his word paint the right pictures in your heart and in your mind. Because if you will let the Holy Spirit lead you, you may go through the water, but you're coming out the other side. You are not going to say, if you let the Holy Spirit lead you, he may not stop you from going through the fire. But when you come out of the fire, you will not smell fire. And because of your testimony, many will turn to the Lord. Hallelujah. It may seem like you're being defeated. No, but the end is you will win. That's why I said you may fall seven times, but you'll rise up again. Hallelujah. The battle is not over. The match is not over until you win. Somebody shout, I'm a, I'm a winner. Let's stand to our feet, please. Lift your hands up and give thanks to God. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. I want you to see yourself winning. I want you to see yourself succeeding. I want you to see yourself blessed. I want you to see yourself really blessed in all areas of your life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, we give you the glory. God, we give you the praise. God, we give you the honor. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Oh, Jesus. 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 Araba shanda brakata masua. Ebro gota mashta lamanta krodina makua. Erbasha tabaha. Lebroka labarakashta lamanta krosia. Mergo shikalimendo grosikua. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray every negative image, every negative thought pattern, every negative influence be erased from our minds, be erased from our hearts, be erased from the screen of our mind. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray, Father, that you will plant new divine thoughts, divine pictures, divinely inspired images into our heart, Lord, that line up with the Word of God, that with confidence we can look at our enemy and say, today I will take your head off with your shoulders. We can speak to our enemy and say, today, devil back off because today I declare by the power of God and by his stripes I am healed by his stripes today I declare I am prosperous today I declare the battle is not mine the battle is the Lord Lord hallelujah I declare father in the name of Jesus let the right images be planted Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I bind every negative influence every negative thought every negative image I bind them and I cast them out of our hearts out of our minds out of our thinking Lord in the name of Jesus and I pray that you would replace them with the Word of God Lord images pictures that are birthed from the Word by the Holy Spirit yes Lord barrenness turning to fruitfulness oh yes your businesses will become prosperous hallelujah barrenness turning into fruitfulness lack turning into abundance hallelujah Lord mourning turning into dancing hallelujah to the Lamb of God the blessing of the Lord the blessing of the Lord the blessing of the Lord you shall live and not die declares the Lord Halabrasha. you shall live and not die you shall live to glorify the works of God hallelujah 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 oh hallelujah 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 blessed be the Lord our God Rikata shakataha, libro di mashakua, o barakishta la manta crosia, arba bra 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 braka, lido ni me casio, libro de basha, lido ni makada moshege de baha, Laura, thank you, Laura, thank you, Laura, thank you, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, 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 blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, Haraba Shadananananan in Karamasua, Lebron de Bratikaha, Nebro Kushtelamanta Crossio. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord our God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your blessing upon this church. I pray a, a tremendous blessing upon your servant, the angelos of this house and his dear wife and the family. I pray, Father, Lord, let those pictures, let those images, let those things that you're birthing, 
become solid, become, Lord, that they will become confident. This is the will of God and they will move forward, Lord. Let nothing delay the process anymore. Let them take that step and move forward. Let them experience the grace of God, the supplies of God, the resources of God. And Lord, let them be surprised by you as they go forward to see everything that they would ever need being supplied in abundance oh God Lord I decree that Lord I decree that Lord I decree that Lord I decree that in the name of Jesus hallelujah Lord I thank you Lord I thank you Lord I pray impart to us the spirit of faith the spirit of faith the spirit of faith the spirit of oh yes yes receive 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 the spirit of faith now flow Holy Spirit God flow Holy Spirit God receive that receive that receive that now receive it now in the name of Jesus come on somebody is having a vision right now you're having a vision from the Lord about your future about your job about your future hallelujah somebody is being blessed Yes, yes, you are about to break through into financial abundance. Somebody is about to break through into financial abundance right now. God is doing something in your situation. Hallelujah. You're coming out of debt. Somebody is coming out of debt supernaturally. The power, the presence of God is here to take you out supernaturally, pull you out of the debt situation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Holy Spirit, I thank you. Rita ta 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 ta. No brakasha ta ta ta. Raba ba 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 ba. Riba ba 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 ba. Likoto shakata ba ha. Yes. 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 My God. Hallelujah. You know what? Somebody's eyes are being healed. Somebody's eyes are being healed today. Right now. Somebody's eyes are being healed. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is in this place. Come on. Receive your touch. Receive his touch. Receive that blessing. Receive that healing. Receive that word. Oh, receive that image. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I really believe people are being healed. Receive that healing touch and check your bodies. Somebody, somebody, come on. God is healing you. God is healing you. Receive that. Receive that. Oh my God. The doctor's report is going to be reversed. Hallelujah. The next time you go for a checkup, you're going to be surprising your doctor. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Please take your seats for a moment. I want to tell you this as I close. Many times when we pray for these people that are terminally sick and have been given up to die by the doctors, we give them this. After we pray and minister, Please open your Bible to Psalm 118, please. And with this, I'm going to close. Because, you know, when somebody is diagnosed with cancer, the image that they carry most of the time is the image of death. So we tell them this. Make this your confession and begin to see this. Psalm 118, verse 17. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. We tell them to say that over and over and over again and we tell them to sleep saying those words why because we want that image to be replaced the image of death to be replaced with the image of life i don't know what the diagnosis is upon your life if you're sick in your body let not the words of the doctor be stronger than the words of the lord yes. hallelujah let God birth that image in you and keep speaking it. Now, while you're speaking it, you're not declaring it. You're building your image. You're building your confidence. You're building that conviction. You come to a place now, you're convinced. Yes, I know that I know that I know. Hallelujah. I know that I know that I know. Now I speak it, but when I speak it, I declare it as it is done because God is one that calleth those things which be not as though they were 
He's speaking as if it's already finished. Now you've come to a place where you now speak and you're now imitating God. You're calling for that which is not as if it's already there. That's releasing your faith. Say amen. Were you blessed today? Yes. I mean, I hope you learned something and I pray the deposit will begin to bear fruit in your lives. And I want to say thank you so much, guys. And thank you, pastors, for allowing us to come and, uh, you know, enjoy ourselves with the congregation and be able to minister. God bless you. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? Let's stand to our feet. Let the weak say. Let the poor say. Let the blind say. Because that's what the Lord has done. Let the weak say. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the blind say, I can see. It's what the Lord has done in me. It's what the Lord has done. Not going to do. Done, done, done. In Christ on the cross, it's done. Now let that done be done here. And then it will be done in your life. So three places it has to be done. First, it's already done on the cross. Now let it be done here. Let it be a finished deal here. Then it will be done in your life. Amen. So the word first creates a picture here before it creates a life for you. That order, don't change the order first it creates here a new picture then it creates a new life for you amen hallelujah are you blessed i'm so blessed amen let our minds be renewed to the picture that the word of god gives to us let your stomachs be filled during the lunch time and let's come back here at five and fill this place and receive again what the Lord has for us. Amen. Come hungry to receive in the evening. Come hungry and ready to act on the word. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. God bless you all. You are dismissed for lunch and we will see you at 5 p.m. Come on, give praise to the Lord. I believe that you have been blessed by the word of God. If you have any testimonies or prayer requests any time of the day, you can contact or email us at the information given down below. And if this message has blessed you, we encourage you to please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thank you and God bless you.